Right. Uh, I like to get my money's worth out of things. Um, I was trying to think about how to get here today, and I was going to get a taxi, and I thought, no, I'm not doing that. I'll go into Domino's instead. Look for the cheapest pizza on the menu. Ask them to deliver it to Tramir, and they asked, what do you want on it? And I said, myself. <laughs> a ride and a free meal. Can't argue with that. Uh, I also get, like, like to get my money's worth at the barbers. Um, <laughs> but I've always resented that when you go, you pay your money and you leave with less than you went in with. So I always ask, you can shave all my hair off, but I want it back at the end. He did it as well, fair play to him. I mean, <laughs> My back sack and crack wax isn't until next week, luckily. <laughs> right, okay. Um, bit of a weird one. So let's try and get you all on side again. Uh, I want to come up with something that I'm sure everyone here can relate to. So give me a big cheer if you're a member of a Scrabble club. <laughs> what about those dictionary updates, eh? <laughs> uh, I go to a, a physical Scrabble club, um, bringing the average age down to about 86, I think. And it's, uh, it's not easy playing a game with people that much older than you. Um, I was playing a gentleman the other day and he had arthritis on triple letter score as well. I mean, 86 <laughs> points, fair enough. Uh, oh, my breath's really loud down this, isn't it? I'll try and stop breathing. Um, and uh, I played a woman after that and she had Alzheimer's. I had to tell her that's named after a German psychologist. It's a proper noun, it's not in the book, I'm afraid. <laughs> I had to tell her it again on the next go, actually. <laughs> but um, when I tell people how much I like Scrabble, they sometimes say this is one of those things you should be a bit less honest about. A um, bit like, you know, when, you get, when somebody asks you what the first album you bought was, nobody answers that honestly, do they? Everyone's got, like, a cool answer and the real answer. And they'll go, like, oh, first album I bought, yeah, I think it was, uh, it'd be like Nirvana or Sonic Youth. Yeah, Sonic Youth, yeah, I used to sit outside uh, Probe Records, you know, smoking and really expanding my mind. I was eight and a half. And the, uh, <laughs> Shut up. You know perfectly well the first album you bought was Psych by PJ and Duncan. <laughs> now known as Anton Deck, of course. Do you ever remember who, uh, Let's Get Ready to Rumble off that album? Where they said they had so many lyrics they were frightened to use them. <laughs> Unfortunately, they overcame that fear. <laughs> Because I remember being sort of primary school age in a sort of early to mid 90s and the sort of songs we liked, you wouldn't, wouldn't really admit to it now. I mean, there was a lot of kind of, it was a bit of a funny time. There's a lot of novelty records, a lot of sort of rave versions of other songs. Um, somebody even got a rave version of the Tetris music in the charts. Remember that's like da, 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 da. And they had these people um, dressed as Tetris blocks, like dancing to the music like this. That dance was really hard to choreograph because Every time they got in a line together, they all disappeared. <laughs> it's not funny though, really. I mean, cause where do they go? All well, these blokes dressed as blocks and just in limbo since 1992. And it's all right if you're the big one because everyone's his mate. But what if you like the Zed? And, but, and another song a bit before that was, um, I remember Bono saying he still hadn't found what he was looking for. <laughs> well, if you will look where the streets have no name. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, but much more recently than that, because I, I I've got a bit of a habit of taking song lyrics literally, and um, much more recently than that, Lady Gaga had a song called Telephone, where she was annoyed at how many people were phoning her all the time. But the first song she did, she said, where are my keys? I've lost my phone. And it bothered me a bit that she didn't sort of explain what happened in between. <laughs> or at least... I thought she didn't, but then I realised in between she had a disappointing entry at number 52 with, oh, it's all right, it was in my handbag. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's really annoying losing your phone, isn't it? I mean, or, you know, before the contract's up, but it just doesn't lend itself well to pop music. I mean, like, like uh, I, I, I've dropped my phone down the toilet once. Has anyone ever done that? Yeah. And they say, put it in rice, put it in rice. That didn't work. I'm just kicked out of that Indian restaurant now as well. <laughs> Yeah, um, so what you've probably gathered so far is I'm quite a big fan of words and pedantry, so it might not surprise you to learn that for over a decade I was a content editor, and I still do it freelance, actually. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it, I suppose having an English degree and a writer, I've always thought of myself as a bit of a 
sort of a creative or an artist or that kind of thing. And the thing about creatives is we tend to be a bit lefty or woke or idealistic, whatever you want to call us. Um, in the Brexit referendum, 96% of creatives voted remain. 96%. The other 4% voted leave as some sort of you know ironic performance piece they were working on, but 96% voted remain. But the weird thing about jobs is if there's a god of jobs, he's got to be a weird sense of humour because there's no jobs in art, so what do we all go into? Marketing, capitalism, very right wing. And meanwhile, you've got, um, you know, the most likely people to vote conservative and Brexit and all that are skilled labourers, plumbers, electricians, builders. They've got environmental targets. They've got to pretend they care about global warming and climate change and all that, you know. I want environmental targets. I want someone to say, your average word length there was six and a half characters. If you brought it down to 5.8, you'd be pressing less keys and that would mean that you'd, uh, you'd save enough energy to boil a thimble full of coffee every three years, that kind of thing. <laughs> and of course, if you're from the Wirral, you're already a very ba bad environmentalist because even our scouse is plastic. So. <laughs> I really like the Wirral though, and Birkenhead's on the up, isn't it? Birkenhead's got loads of things it didn't used to have, like uh, it's got an escape room now, has anyone done one of them? <laughs> Talk about getting your money's worth, an escape room in Birkenhead, you get out and you still want to escape. <laughs> So yeah, it's got all sorts of things that never used to have, but yeah, um, and going back to jobs, but I mean, talking about jobs, I mean, Thomas Edison, he had a great job, didn't he? He just went around inventing things. I mean, like you said, Thomas Edison invented over a thousand things in his life. He would have invented a lot more, but until he invented the light bulb, he didn't realise he was having any ideas. <laughs> so uh, yeah, uh, but yeah, back to jobs and marketing, they're very good engagement, by the way, I just realised they're all here, so yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, another thing you have to get used to if you do marketing is uh, social media. And um, none of us really like social media, do we? I think we're just all on it anyway. We're just addicted to it. I mean, when I dropped my phone down the toilet, the most annoying thing was I couldn't share a picture of my phone down the toilet <laughs> because my phone was down the toilet. So it's kind of that kind of thing. But social media annoys me and it's because it's the type of people you see on it. And I hate to generalize, but there's a certain generation, isn't there? That a bit annoying on it. You know, when I was younger, people used to say, you've got to respect your elders because they fought in the war. And that kind of made sense. But now I say, well, you've got to respect your elders because uh, we really need granddad's house. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, so yeah, it's, it's, um, so being involved in like uh, social media and that, like the, you, you start to see it a lot and you see the certain behaviours that annoy you a lot. And it's things like when somebody puts something up about gay pride or something like that, a gay pride event, and you look at the reactions to it and you'll get the people who like it, just the thumbs up, well, they've just, they've just seen it, haven't they, and responded. You get the people who love it, I don't know about that, it's going a bit far. And then you get the angry face and you have to look, don't you? You have to look, who's this person getting angry at gay pride? So you click on it. And it's the same bloke every time. It's the same bloke from Stoke or Luton or Kings Lynn or somewhere like that. And he's got a, a, a St George's flag on his cross, on his profile picture and a Lest We Forget banner underneath because he loves it when we beat the Nazis because he doesn't like intolerance. So. <laughs> um, but, uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, yeah, and, he's, and then you look, and the things he'll be saying, he'll be saying something like, ah, oh, I'm sick of, I don't mind people doing behind closed doors, but I'm sick of seeing two men kissing right in front of me. And you think, where are you hanging out? <laughs> or like, they'll say, uh, well, what I want to know is, when is there a straight pride event? <laughs> Set one up then. Set one up. Set up a parade in honour of being the same as 90% of people. Like, you could have a, a right-handed parade or a, you know, a not colourblind parade or something like that if you want, you know. But it wouldn't work, would it, a straight pride parade? Because, I mean, the reason it wouldn't work is because of women. Let's be honest. Who is a woman? Give us a cheer if you're a woman. Yeah. I thought that might work. Now cheer if you're a woman who would like to go to a straight pride event. Yay! <laughs> okay. Just one. <laughs> well, you wouldn't really, would you? And I know why you wouldn't. Because it's because of the sort of blokes that go on it, would go on it. And it's those blokes that just get so angry all the time, they end up with really small faces because they just go <laughs> all the time at people. So you've just got loads of, loads of blokes like that, 
all at this parade or pride event standing together in no women, all men, in solidarity of their shared sexual orientation. <laughs> Sounds a bit gay. <laughs> Right, uh, Domino's just free delivery up until 10, so I'm going to get off. <laughs> John Money!